The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. This is Eagle Talk on the NCCU Sports Network. Here's your host, Chris Hooks. Hello, Eagle fans. Welcome to another edition of Eagle Talk. On this edition of the show, we'll have on the head football coach, Jerry Mack, to talk about the epic matchup between North Carolina Central and North Carolina A&T coming up this weekend from O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. Remember, there are tickets still available. Check out NCCUEaglePride.com to get your tickets. There's lawn seating. There's still tickets within the stadium. But again, there's also a new lawn seating area that you can sit in to enjoy what will be a great matchup between the Aggies and the Eagles. We'll also have on sophomore from the women's basketball team, Morgan Jones, has the women's basketball team off to a one and one start this year. And we'll also hear from senior defensive lineman Felix Small, who will talk about his great season here at North Carolina Central and, again, just preview the matchup against North Carolina A&T. Again, the interesting thing about all of this is back in 2007, when we made the move to Division I, this is exactly what we made this move for, to play in a championship game. And we bring on the head coach of the Eagles, Jerry Mack. Coach, to, if I would have told you last December that this was going to happen, that your final game of your first year was for a conference championship, for a share of a conference championship, I think you would have shook my hand right there and said, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> no doubt about that. I mean, we're very blessed as a team, uh, we're very blessed as a program right now to be in this position. Uh, it's what we work for. That's all our hopes and dreams. And we're going to put our best foot forward and see how, how everything turns out on Saturday. And it's funny, I was just in preparation for the show, it's the word hope. You know, the last few weeks we've been playing on hope, and I think that's stronger than anything else right now. Now we have that hope that we have the opportunity. It's right in front of us. How are you approaching this game, and how are you getting these guys mentally prepared? Because, again, this is, I mean, I can if I'm a player right now, I have to be absolutely jacked up right now for, for Saturday. I think you're right. I mean, I looked at the injury list uh, yesterday. There was nobody on the injury <laughs> list. So I think we'll have all bodies in full force uh, for practice today. But, uh, you know, the thing about it is, you know, we always talked about it from day one, what our, some of our goals as a football team were. And uh, part of that was winning a MEAC championship. And I think to do it this first year, to, to try to send these seniors off with, with a championship ring, I think that's what you know, it's all about. You know, who cares if it's a code, you know, however they break it up. But, again, to make it even sweeter, if you do what you're supposed to, you can spoil A&T's <laughs> season, so to speak, to make them where they would be outright with a win. Um, but, again, Let's go back and look at Norfolk State. That was a, I'll tell you what, two teams that, because they made the announcement in the stadium with the score, and it really seemed like from that point on, it was, it was an absolute um, battle. It wasn't the prettiest of football, mm -hmm. but again, a huge battle, a great battle by two teams that were certainly doing everything they could to try to keep themselves in the championship hunt. Right. I thought you saw, saw two teams that day that were hungry for a win. Uh, you know, it, about everything that could happen in the course of a game happened in that game. Uh, offensively, we didn't play extremely well, but I thought defensively that they, they played lights out. They played phenomenal defense, and special teams came up with some big plays when they had to. And that's what it's all about, a total team effort, everybody refusing to, win, refusing to lose. You know, it's funny, and I've been telling you know both Kyle and Joe, you know, off air sometimes. I was like, I feel like we're gonna get a block punt soon. Mm -hmm. I didn't call that one like I did against uh, Hampton, but I tell you what, it could have come at a better time, and it couldn't have come from a better young man than C.J. Moore. Right. You know, not only C.J. You know, stepped up and made a great uh, punt block. Also, Sahid Muhammad, you know, recovering a fumble late on, uh, Felix Small forcing a fumble, and those are three seniors that you know we're gonna be, be missed dearly uh, next year. And they came up and they came to play, and they, you know our guys fed off that momentum, and that's what it's all about. You know, not play, not giving up, and playing hard for those seniors. For those of you that missed the play that won it for North Carolina Central as far as the touchdown is concerned with 5.52 to go, here's a look at that punt block by C.J. Moore. And here's the snap. And it's blocked! blocked. It's blocked! C.J. Moore, Moore lands on in the end zone! Touchdown, Eagles! Oh Are you kidding goodness. me? 19-14, to 14 and the Eagles' sideline erupts! Are you kidding me? What a play by the special teams! We talked about how special teams had to come up big 
to get some possibly points on the board. We were begging for that. And how about the play by the senior? Coach, again, you, you, let's talk about after the punt block. You get an interception. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, your foot is on the throat ready to go. I know it had to be disappointing to see Mr. Reliable mm -hmm. Andre Clark fumble for the first time in quite some time here at North Carolina Central. Right. We were really surprised. You know, it was just a basic routine play. And I think, you know, Andre saw daylight and he was, you know, headed for the end zone. And I uh, just, you know, just didn't squeeze the ball quite tight enough and got stripped from behind. But uh, I told him on the sideline, you know, he's been consistent for us all year. And uh, we're not going to back away. We're going to continue to come back to you. And that's just, we believe in our players. We believe in our young men. You know, and you talked about this in the post game, but uh, did you, how, for us in the booth, I'm sure the fans were thinking, oh, here we go, Morgan State all over again with them scoring late. Um, what was it you told the team during that last drive, and, and what was it uh, that maybe was the key to their success, keeping the, you know, the, the, the Spartans out of the end zone? Well, we talked about it as a team uh, for the last few weeks, playing, you know, giving all you got and playing with your heart and not you know, let history re repeat itself. Uh, and that's one thing that they want, did not want to do. They didn't want to let what happened in Morgan State happen again. And just throughout the course of the year, we haven't been doing a great job of closing and finishing, uh, but when we had to, we did it on Saturday. So when you look at Quinn Billerman, who came in for an injured Malcolm Bell, I thought Quinn had some good moments, you know, um, some good throws. Mm -hmm. um, it, but it just seemed like, again, we got to give a little credence to Norfolk State's defense. They're mm -hmm. pretty daggum good. Right. You know, one of the top defenses, uh, not only in the MEAC, but in the, in, the, in the nation right now. And, uh, you know, we moved the ball pretty decent in the first half. Second half, we struggled a little bit uh, moving the football. But I thought Quinn did an excellent job coming in, feeling, managing the game, making some big time throws when he had to. And, uh, you know, he did not turn, he had one turnover. Uh, was just fundamentals, and we, you know, we're gonna get that fixed this week. Well, I noticed in the one thing, the first thing when we got the turnover after his unfortunate dropping of the snap, you put him under center and said, "You take care of it from here." <laughs> yeah, it was just a, to be a little bit safer. You know, we wanted to make sure we, you know, got under center and made sure, you know, there was no mishandles in the snaps. So, uh, you know, that was just a move we decided to make as an offensive staff. Again, talk about on the defense. I thought you, you know, today's guest, Felix Small. Um, Talk about him, and then because he had a, another exceptional ball game, but Ty Brown, I think he's really started to um, show what he could be and what he's, mm -hmm. what he's, how good he can be at that defensive end position. Right, I think our defense right now is peaking at the right time. Not only did you saw it uh, last week, you saw it against Hampton a little bit. You know, we're being extremely active in the backfield, creating a lot of tackles for losses, uh, coming up with turnovers when we have to come up with turnovers. Uh, Ty Brown is showing, that, you know, why the NFL scouts are in and out every day watching him. Uh, and as well as Felix, you know, he's had a remarkable senior year, and he's going to get some attention at the end of the year as well. Yeah, he leads the nation in forced fumbles seven this year. Uh, mm -hmm. That's just phenomenal. And it just seems like he and C.J. Moore and, and others just continue to find a way to make plays. And that was one thing I kept saying during the fourth quarter was who was going to step it up, and I think we saw on the defensive side who certainly did that. I think so. You know, C.J., he, like I said, Felix and Ty, all four of those guys came to play, and it was a total defensive effort. Uh, they were very active. You can see our linebacker court, you know, being extremely physical uh, with Norfolk's offense. And uh, that's what it's going to take uh, to try to bring the championship home. You know, in, in as much as we talked about Norfolk State's offense throughout the week, it had, for you, the, as far as them being able to get vertical on us on a couple of plays, was that disappointing or was just they just got – uh, they got, you know, called the right plays, or what, what did you see, you know, with us getting beat a couple times? We were a little bit undisciplined in the back end. Our, our defensive back, our secondary was picking in the backfield just a little bit. And, uh, you know, when you do that, you know, any team is going to be able to get the ball behind you a little bit. And uh, we got out, out matched at the point of attack one time on Mike Jones' touchdown. Uh, we got beat uh, one, time, one time on a stop and go type route, a double move route on Ryan. But, uh, you know, the key is they were able to, you know, keep that in the back of their mind and go out and then overcome that adversity. And that's the key. You know, you're going to make some mistakes, but you got to be able to overcome some adversity. And that's one thing as a football team we're learning and we're growing. Let's go ahead and preview this matchup against North Carolina a and I mean, arch rival. Um, but you look at the numbers, and there's a reason why they have one loss in the conference right now. They are as fundamentally sound. You look at the numbers, they're as good as it gets offensively, defensively, highest scoring team in the league, mm -hmm. allowing the least amount of points. Talk about the Aggies. Uh, you know, like you said, fundamentally all sides of the football, uh, offense, defense, special teams. Offensively, they have one of the top running backs, I feel like, in the country right now, Tyree Cohen. 
Uh, on defense, uh, they do a great job being fundamental sound. Uh, their linebacker core is extremely good, and also their secondary is extremely good. Uh, special teams, they, they're extremely sound. They don't make a whole lot of mistakes. They don't turn the ball over, uh, and they just kind of you know sit back and let you beat yourself. And, and that's going to be one of the keys to the game. We cannot go out there and commit turnovers. We have to control the clock. We have to be able to run the football. Uh, and defensively, we have to do a good job of getting them off the field on third down, which you know for the most part all season we've done a good job on third downs on both sides of the offense and defense. Well, and, and you talk about that. As good as their defense was last year, they're, 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 the numbers, you know, aren't there that like are this year. But they're still as good. Um, seeing them and seeing what we can do, what, you feel like we're going to be able to if we do what we're supposed to do, having getting the guys back we're supposed to as far as the suspensions are concerned, we should be just fine if we do what we're supposed to do. I think so. You know, you know, we're no slouches on offense as well. You know, we've had some success this year, and I think we're number two in the league in scoring. So uh, we know how to score points as well. And defensively, like I said, we're kind of clicking and gelling at the right time. So I um, mean, you know, our guys will be ready to play. Special team wise, Coach Mendenhall has done an extremely good job getting those guys to create turnovers and, and put points on the board. So uh, I think we'll be ready to play as well. well. Coach, what have you heard about the rivalry between North Carolina Central and North Carolina a and I think it's one of the most intense rivalries uh, in, in all of college football right now. Uh, you know, for them being 45 minutes up the road, I think a lot of these young men were recruited by A&T and they chose Central and vice versa. Some of those young men may have chose A&T. So uh, it's going to be an exciting matchup and I'm looking forward to my first uh, Eagle Aggie Classic. So. Practice probably has, you know, I'm guessing practice probably won't be very difficult to to uh, to run this week. I don't think so. I think everybody's going to be focused. Everybody's going to be locked in. I think everyone from not only our players, from our training staff, from our administration, I think everybody knows what's at stake. And I'm looking forward to this being a, our first run of the championship. Well, we coach, we hope that we keep playing the way we have. We certainly could find ourselves in a great position come the fourth quarter. You know, for the fact that it's at home certainly has to be comforting too, because our fans, you know, are as passionate as they come. And I tell you what, you're, if Keller really. It's going to be loud come Saturday. It is. I mean, we're going to feed off the energy of our crowd. And I think, you know, everything that they did for us at homecoming, you know, we're expecting that times 10. And uh, that's one of the reasons I felt like on homecoming, I said it before, that we were able to create some momentum, go out there and create some turnovers. And our guys just love when that, when that stadium is rocking. I tell you what, I'm getting chills just thinking about mm -hmm. what it's going to be like on Saturday. Coach, thanks for your time. Best of luck. Thanks, Chris. That is head coach Jerry Mack. Again, there are tickets available for the contest this weekend against North Carolina A&T. Again, check out nccueaglepride.com for tickets. You just go to the ticket section, buy your tickets. There is lawn seating available. We'll have a video board out there for fans that can't see the field. Again, get out there, support, and wear your maroon and gray. As again, we, we need all Eagle fans, all Eagle fans around the nation to make their way here to Durham here this weekend. We'll be right back. We'll talk basketball with Morgan Jones from the women's basketball team right after this on Eagle Talk. Why should you join Team 23? The biggest savings. The best selection. The championship service. A lifetime guarantee. The best value. The people. There's only one team. Team 23. Team 23 means your engine is guaranteed for life, free oil changes for life, and much, much more. Michael Jordan Nissan is Team 23. Isn't it time for you to join Team 23? Michael Jordan Nissan, 15501 North of I-40. On that grind, huh? Just trying to be like you. Careful what you wish for. No, that's not negotiable. We have to make sure the contract is tight. It's in the brief. Check paragraph five. So I'm on my way out. What are you studying? Statistics? I flunked that. Have a good night. Hey, you forgot something. Nah, man. That's you. Big Mac extra sauce, right? Right. Sometimes being deeply rooted. Thanks. Means being simply connected. Welcome back to Eagle Talk as we bring on Morgan Jones from the women's basketball team to talk about the start of their season. Is again Morgan, sophomore from Stockbridge, Georgia. Morgan, thanks for joining us here on today's show. Oh, it's a, it's an honor. It's an honor to be on here. Well, you've come out blazing here in the first couple of ball games. It really seems like, and a lot of people have talked around the women's basketball program about how hard you've worked in the off season on your game. It seems like it's uh, it's coming to, to fruition right now for you. Talk about that. 
Well, yeah, I've been working with uh, the new head coach, one of the uh, coaches, I'm sorry, uh, Coach Mintz. And so uh, she's been helping me with getting my shot off quicker um, because a lot of teams have been able to identify me as a shooter as to where as last year I was a new player and they weren't able to. So, yeah, that's what I've been working on. Well, and I think, and I said this last year, you can certainly see that you've got it in you to, to um, succeed at this level. And it's just a matter of getting out there. And, I, you know, I think for you it's just – Getting comfortable, and, and you certainly looked at here through the first two ball games. Has it been something as far as you just getting settled in early, hitting a shot early? What what is it for you that really gets you into your comfort zone? Well, um, we we get hype in the locker room. So uh, as a team, getting hype in there, and then coming out and being hype on the court, and um, wanting to win, um, and playing together, the team looks for me uh, early on. And when I'm open, I just let it fly, and letting it fly it really. Uh, gets me in my groove and do you take the same mentality as Reggie Miller if you're off shoot to your own if your own shoot to your off yeah I like that yeah, <laughs> I do actually you know you gotta keep shooting until you make it and all it takes is one yeah. so it, it, and it, certainly you've you've shown that here first two ball games talk about the game against Western the win on the road to start the year uh that was a very exciting game um we came out and we played together we looked for the open person and um Kira got off to a great start and um, that, that really helped us. Uh, and uh, in the first half, we also were able to um, look for each other. And so doing that and playing together, we were able to beat Western. So you, you, you make it two wins in a row against Western. You move on, you take on Campbell on a Monday night. Talk about that ball game. We got behind a little early, yeah. um, but we, you know, talk about that contest. Well, we started off a little slow. Um, our defense wasn't as good as it normally would have been. And so uh, we're, we plan on getting better with that, uh, looking at film and um, working on our positionings and the different sets that our coaches give us. And uh, so we got off to a late start and we came out hype in the second half knowing that we had to come back, and we did. And we were able to come back and um, change the momentum. And we were able to get up as much as four. And then uh, number 21 came out shooting threes, and she got two of them off back to back, and the momentum sw switched again. So, yeah. Well, again, to start off on the road, it's tough against both Campbell and Western Carolina. They're both very good, well-coached ball clubs. So we're one and one after two games. You feel like, um, you know, for you, how do you feel like you're playing at this point? At this point, I feel like I'm playing pretty good, um, but I feel like there's always room for improvement, and so uh, I'll be back in the gym again, working with Coach Mintz, making sure my shot is getting off correctly, and working on my defense. Well, and the one thing about this time of the year, it gives you that time to have more time to shoot. Once we get into conference play, it's it's pretty routine. This is kind of, we have a few days here and there before your next game, and then you, you, do you feel like that helps you in the in this early portion of the season? Yeah, that definitely helps when you have time to uh, shoot every day. Like you said, the games, you know, were a little uh, closer together. So, yeah, but later on, you know, shooting with Coach Mitch won't be as, as much of a big incident. Um, well, and it seems like I think the difference between the program, both men's and women, men's women's programs since I've gotten here is you see – that you and Nimrod and other Kira and, and you know and Rocky, you see you guys in the gym a whole lot more. Um, and, and again, because that's what basketball is. It's a make or miss game. You have to perfect that craft. Yeah, the ball is a funny thing is what one of my coaches used to tell me. So um, you have to continue to work on it and be in the gym. And being in there with the boys sometimes is fun too. Uh, watching Nimrod and Watching him on the shoot machine is like, oh, I have to get in there and be on the shoot machine too. So yeah. Well, and again, it's competitive. You can tell as you're a competitive person going out there and trying to, you know, better him. For you, I guess this summer, what was the what was the one thing you did this summer to get ready for this year? Because it seems like whatever you're doing has worked. Um, working out with Coach Riley has definitely uh, changed. Uh, getting stronger is important, and. Um, that's really what helped change the summer is working with Coach Riley and getting in condition. Talk about Coach Riley in, the, in this program, his the strength and conditioning program, him and Brandon Lee and, and George Bulldog Smith who kind of you know oversees all of it. Talk about what he does for the, all of athletics as far as as far oh. when, as far as getting these everybody in shape. Coach Riley is amazing. They're they're all amazing. Um, they get us amped and they're making sure that we're prepared. Um, conditioning 
we're doing everything full speed. There is no walking or you're giving it 100 percent every time you're with Coach Riley and that help us prepare for the games and how long they can be or how over time, you know, we, we're prepared for it, working with Coach Riley and Coach Lee. For you, let's talk about the Morgan Jones off the court. You're a sophomore here at North Carolina Central. Um, what made you pick North Carolina Central? Oh, definitely the family oriented, uh, how it made me feel. Being away from home, um, I definitely needed a, a family and I feel like I found that here. And so, yeah. That's what helps. So you love it here? Yes, I do. No, no regrets. So is, as far as your goals this season, I know your, your team goals, obviously, MEAC championship, move up the ladder in the conference. For you, what, what goals have you set for yourself this season? Um, as far as this season, I just want to be the best player I can be, um, contributing to the team as much as I can. Um, if I'm off one night, making sure that somebody else is on. And uh, becoming a better defensive player is definitely key for me. Well, we know you got the shot down, Pat, so we hopefully, you know, you can uh, do all that and, you know, get where you need to be. And I think you're going to be a key component to, to where to us getting better because, you know, a lot of people coming in the season was, you know, Jessica Freeman left, yeah. a, a, an indelible mark on the program of what she did in her one season, you know. But it seems like, you know, looking at the box scores, it's going to be a combined effort, the Rockies, the Tishes, the, the you, Kira, and others, uh, you know, coming together and, and, and becoming a one unit, so to speak. Yeah, um, we definitely, uh, it's not, we're balanced in the scoring, so uh, working together is definitely going to make it harder for other, our opponents. They can't just choose one person and say, oh, we have to lock this one person down. It's pretty much whoever is out there. Um, you have to watch all of us. We're all a weapon, so I think that's the difference this year. Okay. What's your major here in North Carolina Central? Criminal Justice. All right, so what do you want to do? Uh, go to the FBI or the CIA. Really? Yes. What do you want to do there? Well, I'm planning on working, you know, secret agent kind of thing, so <laughs> couldn't tell you all that. <laughs> let's just ah, tell you all is that. Is that classified G13? Yeah, I got you. that is. Um, what made you want to do that? Um, my aunt was a police officer. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It, let's say, all right, so it, if you don't go to the, if you don't make it up that far, is, is, I mean, is that, would you settle being a police officer? Um, yeah, I would. I wouldn't call it settling. It's no, I understand. That, yeah. I know, and I don't mean to say yeah. that. I, you know, I didn't mean to say it that way. Um, this is definitely something that I look forward to if I don't make it all the way. But I plan on going overseas first off. So yeah. Well, we hope you certainly get to do that. You know, and there are plenty of student athletes here that have gone on to be in the police force, um, and you certainly could, you know, get in touch with them. Maybe do a ride along program. I'm sure you did oh, yeah. with your with your aunt too as well. Sure. What is it about that that you that makes you want to be a, a, a police officer or go to the FBI or the CIA? Just helping others. Um, that's pretty much it, uh, doing whatever I can to help. Um, and I see that as a way of being able to help, so that's what I decided I wanted to do. I could see you being a, a deadly assassin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Morgan Jones, thanks for your time. Best of luck, and we'll keep up with you as the season progresses. I'm sure you know we'll certainly uh, get to spend a lot of time together come you know, conference season when we both travel to the same spots. Congrats on the start. Thank Hopefully you. keep that up. Thank you. That is Morgan Jones from the women's basketball team. Fascinating young lady to talk to. We'll talk to Felix Small, the football team, right after this on Eagle Talk. Wake up and get to Briggs Restaurants for Briggs $5.99 weekday breakfast specials. Now available from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Just $5.99 for Briggs weekday breakfast specials. Available only at Briggs. Back to Eagle Talk. Joining us on the program is the forced fumble machine that he is, Felix Small from Brooklyn, New York. Senior as his career wraps up here this weekend against North Carolina a and Before we get to the Aggies, let's talk about Norfolk State. I mean, just the team's play and what you felt like, uh, what, was, what that game was like for you. Um, start from the top. Uh, Personally, I felt like it was an emotional game for me and stuff like that, being a senior and stuff like that. Uh, at the end, it was just scary and stuff like that. Uh, it just reminded me of Morgan State, flashbacks and stuff like that. 
the goal line, seven yards to go, it was just, it was just really, really tough. Well, you came through. The, the, the DBs, the linebackers behind you came through. You put a little pressure on it that made him force his throw a little quicker. Um, you know, we got the interception to seal the win. What was that like for you? Um, when that happened, I just felt the relief. It was just, it was just a good win. It felt really great. When you look at just the overall season thus far, I mean, with last year, everything that happened last year, now to now, um, it's got to be pretty gratifying that we're gonna, you're gonna finish your career with a non-losing record, guaranteed. Yes, sir. Um, that feels really, really great too. Meaning that uh, from since high school, always wanted a ring and never had one. So here's our chance. So, what's the? I mean, as we get set to take to start practice, start preparing for A and T, what's the vibe right now with the team? Um, everybody's worked up. Everybody's hyped and ready to go. Everybody's excited to go to practice. Well, when you look at this ball game and the opportunity, I mean, you came here to win championships. And like you said, this is exactly why, why we made that move in 2007 to Division One to play a and for a regular season championship. Um, I mean, how are you? Are you able to sleep? Or I mean, just how excited are you? Um, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited because simple fact, uh, last year I got hurt and I'm just ready. I'm just hyped. I'm ready to go play. Well, when you when you look at this ball game and the opportunity at hand, how also is the team looking at this to try to keep themselves focused on this ball game? Uh, well, everybody's uh, well, pretty much everybody's working hard and stuff like that, and um, everybody's really really focused on this game. Like it's I never seen since I've been here. I haven't seen everybody so worked up like that like this. Well, I mean, you know, obviously we didn't have a good result. We haven't had a good result against A&T in quite a while. Right. Um, so obviously that's something that's going for us. I mean, we're sick of losing to them um, after, you know, owning them for the first few years that I was here at least. Um, again, when you look at this ball game and just look at the, the opportunity at hand, you know, what are the senior leaders saying right now to everybody else? Um, pretty much stay focused, uh, work hard. And we'll come out on top. Well, again, to be in this position with some help, you know, did you think two weeks ago we'd be in this position? Um, well, I, I always said that, that we always want to have a chance. Like we always had, had a chance and that we will have a chance. I mean, just things just happen, happen in our favor. It, it, you look at that Norfolk State ball game, defensively you guys really came up strong when you needed most. You and Ty Brown have sort of really gelled on the ends. What do you feel like has been the key to you and Ty's success this year? Uh, me telling Ty that whoever gets there first, like whoever gets there first. Well, I mean, you, who's gotten there first? Well, More often than not. Well, we've both been working hard and stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know, we've been taking, taking turns getting there. So pretty much. Talk about just, you've just had a knack this year of seven forced fumbles, which is number one in the nation. How is that? I mean, what have you, has there been anything that you've worked on to, to strip drills, coaching-wise? What, what do you feel like has been the key to you doing so well in that area? Get after the quarterback, pretty much. Well, it's not just him that you're forcing fumbles with. Uh, pretty much. Well, I, I guess you can say drills and stuff like that we had uh, worked on in practice and stuff like that, strip drills and stuff like that. Final year here at North Carolina Central. What do you, what do you have on the agenda for yourself after you graduate? Um, well, that's really, really tough right now. You know, uh, well, I have my first degree in um, human services, and I'm mm -hmm. working on my second one in psychology. Okay. Uh, I'm not pretty sure what I want to do, but I have have a couple of ideas of what I want to do and stuff like that as of when I leave and stuff like that. But What are those? Uh, well, I was thinking about becoming a, a probation officer and stuff like that. I don't think I'd want to mess with you. <laughs> I don't think I would. And, and that's pretty cool. That's a, that, that's a great, great uh, area to go in, especially as um, big as you are. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure you'd probably intimidate some guys. But honestly, what, what makes you want to you know, possibly do that? Obviously, I, I know that you're probably more than likely going to pursue, a, for hopefully, a pro career. Yes, sir. Take, take a, a gander at that. Um, you know, obviously, that's every football, basketball player's dream. Same yes, thing in women's basketball as well. Um, but what makes you want to possibly be a probation officer? Um. Well, I just like helping people, you know, like uh, that's just been always my thing. Like I've just been a people person. I just like helping people what in is, general. What is one thing that, that a lot of people don't know about Felix Small? Um, you told me tough, no tough questions, so I've got to ask a few. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing, 
Uh, I'm a PK. You're a PK. What is that? A preacher's, a preacher's kid. Really? Yes. That's awesome. What's the, what are the advantages of being a preacher's kid? Um, my mom is always on my back, always on my back, uh, 24-7. Um, she's always preaching to me and stuff like that, telling me to do this, do that, do the right things, stuff like that. Um, and I think that has actually helped me through a lot, actually, and stuff like that. Um, that's fa I mean, that's fascinating. There are some disadvantages, there, but you know. Yeah. Uh, you can never misbehave. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that too. Um, <laughs> that's a whole lot of stuff. You well, know, and right? I guarantee you everybody's watching you because, you know, you're the, I understand how that, I, that can right. be. But that's all right. And Mama, she's done well. You can tell. You can you can look at her. Tell her. She, you can look at the camera. Say, "Mom, you've done a good job." Mom, Mom you've you, done a good job. Yes. There you, there you go, Felix. It's been great getting to know you the last couple of years. I hope uh, with everything I have that that you get to leave here with the ring. And uh, I, I, how excited are you to see the Aggies come to town here in Durham with our fans? I'm excited. Really, really excited. I mean, because really worked up. Yeah, you haven't. We went there last year, and it was you know it was not a, a great ball game by any stretch of the imagination. Here, you know, what what do we have to do on the defense to, to slow down Tariq Cohen? Oh, man, we just have to get after him and hit him every play, every chance we get, have to hit him. He's a good – when you see them, how good are they? Um, <clears throat> well, the O-line, they're, they're fast and stuff like that. They're, they're, they're light. They're not as heavy as our O-line and stuff like that. Um, they're, they're not a bad team. They're actually good, so we just have to get after them. Like, we just have, like how we did last week, we just have to go. Just have to play physical and fast. Well, we'll certainly get a chance to do that here this weekend. We certainly appreciate you joining us here on Eagle Talk. And we wish you the best of luck, buddy. Yes, sir. That is Felix Small of the NCCU football team. We will wrap up this edition of Eagle Talk right after this. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. As we wrap up this edition of Eagle Talk, I want to remind you we will not have a show next week due to the Thanksgiving holiday. The men's basketball team will be on the road as well as the women's basketball team. They'll be around here as well. Well, stay up to date with nccueaglepride.com to stay up to date with both the men's and the women's basketball team as their seasons go full force after this week. There are still tickets available for the contest between North Carolina A&T and your Eagles of North Carolina Central. Go to the NCCU ticket office online at www.nccueaglepride.com or call the NCCU ticket office at 919-530-5170. Get your tickets, pack the house, make noise, Make it loud for the Aggies come this weekend. We need you to protect the nest as, again, we're playing for a share of the MEAC regular season championship. For all the students here in the Mass Communications Building at North Carolina Central, special thanks to them for all of everything that Miss Casey Hicks does. Felicia Casey Hicks, the TV studio manager here at North Carolina Central, does a tremendous job helping out with this show as well. We thank you for tuning in. We wish you the best. Hopefully we'll see you here this weekend for the matchup between North Carolina a and North Carolina Central. With all that said, so long everybody. Carolina Central is going to be picked up and knocked for by Tim Daniel. Picked go. up now by CJ Moore. CJ Moore, no one even. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.